Okay, that's it for level one infarct. On to all the other stuff. Pericarditis. The hallmark of pericarditis is diffuse ST elevation. There tends to be no reciprocal ST depression, except AVR shows ST depression because AVR is in the opposite direction of basically all the other leads. And then another thing you can look for is PR depression. So the PR segment goes from the end of the P wave to the start of the QRS. That's this guy. And in this lead, you can see that that's decreased compared to baseline over here. So that's PR depression. And in this example, you can see some PR depression in lead two and then F as well. And then there's the diffuse ST elevation. One, two, F, L. It's ST depression in AVR, because again, that's in the opposite direction of all the other uh, leads. V2, V3, there's just ST elevation all over the place. And when it's really diffuse, it makes you think of pericarditis more so than myocardial infarction. Let's go over early repolarization. That's a normal variant. It's common in younger people and athletes. And there are three basic things about that on the ECG. There is concave up ST elevation with a notch at the end of the QRS. So what concave up means is the ST segment looks like this. The concave portion is facing up. And I drew that here as a smiley face because early repolarization is a normal variant and generally benign. Concave down would look like this. And that looks like a frowny face because that's a heart attack. So that's a good way to think about it. What the notch is at the end of the QRS, there's a little part where it goes up and down really quick like that. I put that on the face over here. So there's a notch. And then the third part that you'll see is oftentimes large T waves. They're not particularly large on the CCG, but if you had a big T wave, that would go along with early repolarization. Okay, let's go over mild hyperkalemia for potassium approximately 5.5 to 6.5 milliequivalents per liter. The main feature is tall, narrow, peak T waves. So we've got those here. And you can think of the T waves as being full of potassium. Here's mild hypokalemia, and the features are flat T waves and prominent U waves. U waves come after the T wave. They reflect repolarization of the Hisperkinji system. So if that's a T wave, then this is a U wave. And you can see that in the CCG, here's a U wave. And you can think of that as the potassium is being drained out of the T waves and into the U waves. So, here's our last item for level one, low voltage. Low voltage is defined as one or the other of less than five millimeters in the limb leads or less than 10 millimeters in the precordial leads. So, you would think it would need to be both of them to meet the criteria, but it actually just needs to meet one of the two criteria. And in the CCG, you can see in lead one, it's more than five millimeters total. So you take the up and the down and add them together, and this is about six millimeters. So it doesn't meet criteria by the limb leads, because if any one of the limb leads is more than five millimeters, then it doesn't meet criteria. But over here in the precordial leads, the largest complex is probably here in V4, and that's slightly less than 10 millimeters. So it does meet criteria for that. Causes of low voltage include pericardial effusion, amyloid, hypothyroidism, obesity. Okay, that's it for level one. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. You can go to my website, cardiogage.com, and find levels two and level three for a small fee. I'm going to be making testing available in the future, so you can check back to the website to see if those tests are available. That should be a pretty fun way for you to assess how you've been doing with absorbing the information. Do me a favor and hit like and subscribe for more content, and have yourself a great day.